Ready? Yes. All right. So, K to rows, what we want to do back here is I want you to, to determine if it has a max or a minimum value. So the first thing we, got, we need to remember is going back to what we talked about with our quadratic functions. Okay? Um, Sadiq, could you take your bag off your desk, please, so you're looking up here and writing this down? So remember, ladies and gentlemen, when we talked about quadratic functions, we had ax squared plus bx plus c. All right? That was our quadratic function. And remember, what was it to determine if it was going to? Remember, there was, when we looked at it, we had two different types of graphs. It either opened up or a graph opened down. And remember, when it opened up, we had a minimum value. And when it opened down, we had a maximum value. Right? Now, do you guys remember what part of the quadratic function told us if it was going to open up or if it was going to open down? Does anybody remember? Yes. A, exactly. Remember, there was a rule, there was a test that we wrote down in our notes. If A was less than 0, right, that means our graph opened down, so we had a max value. And if A was greater than 0, that means our graph opened up, meaning we'd have a minimum value. So the next thing is, so now I look at this, and I look at my A, and since I do not have a number that's pointed out, I know that my number in front of my x squared is going to be 1. All right? And 1, it's a positive 1, is greater than 0. So therefore, I know that I'm going to have a minimum value. But now I need to figure out what that minimum value is. right? So remember, if we look at our graph, that minimum, that minimum value is located what we call it the vertex, right? at our vertex. So what I need to do is I need to determine if they were going to have a vertex, or what our vertex is. So the first thing is I know I'm going to have a minimum value. And then I need to figure out where it is on the vertex. So remember, the vertex had an x-coordinate. The x-coordinate of that vertex, Dimitri, are you writing this down? The x-coordinate on this, if the x-coordinate of your vertex is through the axis of symmetry. And also in your notes, we wrote down, so the axis of symmetry was opposite of b divided by 2a. So your opposite of b, in this case, your b is 2. So I'm going to have negative 2 divided by 2 times 1, which is negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. So therefore, the x value of my minimum value, which is my vertex, is that x equals negative 1. Now remember, this is a function. So if I have an x value and I want to find the f of x value or the y value, I need to plug this value into my function to find its opposing the output, correct? So what I'm going to do is, so then I take f of negative 1, and I plug in negative 1 to find my f of x value, or my um, output value of my coordinate. You can shut those blinds if you want to. They're just open for another reason. So f of, f of negative 1 is going to equal negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1. Negative 1 squared is going to be a positive 1 minus 2, which equals negative 1. Okay, So therefore, my vertex is at negative 1 comma negative 1. So that's going to be the value of my, um, my minimum value. So if you look at the value, if we were going to kind of plot this, you could say my, I'm, my graph is going to have a minimum value because my a is greater than 0. And the minimum value is going to be at negative 1 because that's the output of my vertex. So my vertex is at negative 1 comma negative 1. And then the next thing is I need to do is I need to determine the domain and range. So let's, to get an idea of domain and range, let's go ahead and plot what this graph would look like. If I go to negative 1, negative 1, that's going to be right there. I know that this is going to be a minimum value. So therefore, my graph is going to do something like this. All right, I'm just sketching the graph. I know it's not going to be exact, but I'm just going to sketch the graph to hopefully give you guys an idea of how you can determine what the domain and range are. Domain is the set of all x values of your function. So we look at this graph. Notice that I put arrows on this graph. As this graph continues to go up, as going up, it's going to keep on expanding and expanding. So I can say this point on the x-intercept, or this x value, is that going, does that have a value of my function? Yeah, it's right there, right? If I put here, is that going to have a value of my function? Yeah, it's up there. And if I keep on going to the left, am I going to keep on having values of the, on this function for all x values? 
Is there any going to be? Is there any reason for that me not to have an x value for this function? No, because as the function keeps on growing, it's just going to keep on expanding forever and ever. Yes. So would the domain always be negative positive? For yes, for your quadratics, your domain is always going to be negative infinity to infinity, unless we have some different constraints. But we can just write our domain as from negative infinity to infinity. Because all quadratics, they're always going to keep on expanding left and right. So yes, your domain is always going to be um, negative infinity to infinity, or what we might sometimes say is all real numbers. Our range, though, is going to be a little bit different, because our range is now dealing with the y values. So is there any reason, as I keep on going up, for there to be a stoppage of my y values, that there's going to be a y value that's not a part of this function? No, because this goes up infinity, right? So you could say 100 is a part. Of, 100 is a point on my function. 1,000 is a point on my function. All these y values keep on coming up. However, as we keep on going farther and farther down, is there a point where y values, where I do not have y values for my function? Yeah, and at that point where it stops, is that where? Right, so your range is negative 1 to infinity. Because past negative 1, you don't have any y values for your function. So therefore, those numbers are not a part of your range. Okay, It's only for the y values that are a part of your function. Does that make a little bit more sense? Yes? We can see the graph. It doesn't, doesn't go any farther. So it stops. Right? It's, you can see, remember we talked about this negative 1 is the what? Minimum value, right? This says your smallest value, which is to negative infinity, to infinity. Smallest value is negative 1 through to positive infinity. That's what it represents. OK? Cool? Better? OK.